Hello and good morning listeners welcome back to Almus Market Mornings your daily dose of global financial updates I'm your host Swaraj Rajgopal and we have got you covered on everything from currency shifts to pivotal central bank decisions and important speeches plus you'll gain expert analysis on macroeconomic data that's shaping the market narrative right now Join us for this episode and navigate the markets with confidence It is an important event day for the market starting with the European Central Bank meeting. Now the eurozone has been struggling for some time and that's somewhat reflected in the single currency euro. It is expected that the central bank would be cutting rates but investors would also be looking at more guidance on further rate path. Will the ECB match the Fed in rate cuts or will they be cutting more is something markets would be trying to figure out. Today there is also the retail sales data from the US. Consumption is an important factor which drives growth in the US and hence it's an important metric investors would be keenly observing good morning jk uh, euro still seems to be beaten down any particular expectations from today's events uh, good morning uh, swaraj yes uh, thanks to persistent uh, weakness in euro the dollar index has actually hit a three near three month high at 103.62 it's more of a euro longs uh, squaring up ahead of ecb meeting today and uh, i would say more than euro dollar it was the euro crosses that we have been uh, sold off and uh, uh, yes uh, i i mean going by uh, lagarde's record uh, they will be less committal about uh, future moves so today's move is fully discounted they will again continue to hint at uh, the data dependent approach uh, for rates uh, although the recent numbers uh, from eurozone and uh, germany have given some hopes that the economy might have hit a trough but it's too early to say we need to see more evidence uh, in the coming days uh, therefore uh, even i would think that uh, ecb's uh, rate cut in the future uh, will be uh, will be definitely not uh, as much as uh, fed but definitely we will have to wait and see how things go about uh, in the meantime uh, uh, we saw even sterling fall through 1.30 support after a weak cpi number and uh, inflation hit uh, below their uh, 2% target for the first time in, uh, since april 2021 even the core inflation was fall uh, uh, lower uh, guilt yields uh, fell uh, 11 basis points of staggering fall uh, so again even the sterling weakness added uh, to the you know strength in the dollar index uh, yen of course continues to pressure towards 150 but then uh, that's been tough to uh, crack as well now uh, if you look at the overall picture there's a lot of plenty of uh, you know dovish news across we had philippines and saw thai central banks in asia cutting rates uk inflation fell below its 2% target for the first time in 3 years uh, uh, you know and then we saw uh, we will see of course uh, a rate cut by them on november 7th and we'll see whether there will be more in the months to come japanese officials are speaking dovish about the next move and then a day before only we had seen a big fall in canadian inflation that justifies an the jumbo rate cut by the bank of canada so the general uh, dovish atmosphere has led to yield falling across the two year uh, in us also came down to 3.93 from a high of 4.10 that was seen a few days uh, back now the fall in yields across is support for precious metals more than the currencies and we saw the gold rising near its previous high of uh, 2686 although uh, it has held uh, i feel it's a matter of time it before uh, it is uh, broken. Uh, Thursday will be one of the busiest days in terms of economic data. Apart from the ECB rate decision, we'll have the retail sales data where the control group uh, that feeds directly into the GDP uh, will be uh, closely watched. Um, uh, there is an expectation that retail sales will rebound. Uh, weekly jobless claims, that has been majorly diverging uh, from the indications of the monthly jobs data will be closely watched once again a number uh, in excess of 2,55,000 uh, is expected however uh, how much of it is due to the temporary effect of the two uh, you know the uh, cyclones uh, uh, that storms that the US uh, uh, coasts have faced is uh, uh, to be watched uh, that will be known only in the coming weeks uh, and <clears throat> there will be more hints about the manufacturing sector as we get the Philly Fed manufacturing index industrial product and the capacity use uh, we we'll also have the housing data uh, to throw a light on the latest status of the housing market that has been in slump uh, for such a long time and some uh, you know indications are that the housing affordability in the us is 
uh, at the at the lowest level uh, since uh, uh, you know uh, 1980 and that's a very uh, bad sign for the housing sector so all in all a dollar um, at a crucial level um, a 200 day moving average on the dollar index is at 103.62 that is where we are just now we might uh, marginally break it if there is a dovish uh, statement from ecb i some i feel that you know euro uh, has still has limited downside from here after the rate cut announcement it should rebound uh, sooner or later and ahead of the us election i think euro serves as one of the better uh, safe haven currencies to go long into as the rupee is concerned found formidable resistance ahead of 84.10 due to rbs uh, consistent intervention fi outflow somewhat moderated but still uh, very much there we are seeing some IPO related inflows as well and the hesitation of marketplace to initiate fresh longs at these levels uh, also mattered now uh, apart from uh, you know the above, a sharp fall in the trade deficit by about 9 billion as per data published yesterday also helped rupee to strengthen beyond 84. Even after adjusting for the one off gold import in August, the deficit was expected around 24 billion, but the sharper decline indicates a general fall in imports. Uh, negative side of the report is that exports are again stagnating, uh, even though, uh, in fact, a small fall is seen. Even a big fall in non gold imports is a Sign of worry as it indicates a fall in demand. Uh, of course, for the rupee flows do matter a lot. While for the next one one month, we will see a cautious approach ahead of the US elections and the uncertainties associated with the policies uh, post that. The foreign over, uh, investors, uh, uh, just to get a perspective, have dumped Indian stocks every single day in this month for a total value of 6.7 billion. Add to that about 1.5 billion that they had. Uh, sold uh, in the last day of uh, September as well. So this month selling is on track to surpass the uh, the amount of selling that we saw in March 2020, which was the COVID uh, period. So um, a mixed picture for uh, rupee and uh, the, for the dollar, it's at a, um, a crucial point uh, uh, and ahead of uh, crucial events ahead. So a lot to look forward to from the currency markets. Thank you. Thank you, Jake. And just quickly, <clears throat> quickly summarizing, dollar index has hit a three month high. Uh, as euro weakness is uh, driving the dollar index higher and it's even more crucial because if today in the ECB meeting, the central banker up, uh, adopt a dovish statement that might result in some more fall in the euro. You know, sterling also fell uh, below 1.30 as inflation fell below expectations and also below the, uh, uh, below the target of BOE, which is 2%. Uh, and, and a lot of dovish data from, uh, from various economies, you know, Philippines, Canada, uh, now even UK. Uh, in Canada, of course, the inflation fell and now markets are pricing big rate cuts over there as well. Uh, and when it comes to data, there is expectation that US retail sales may rebound today. Uh, but of course, uh, there's also the weekly jobless claims data and the jobless, uh, jobless claims may be affected by the storms. Uh, and that has affected the recent prints as well. For rupee 8410, uh, 8410 has found to be a tough level to break. Uh, there are there has also been a sharp fall in the trade deficit by nine billion dollars in September. It's also because of one of gold imports after the custom duty cut has gotten adjusted, but exports have stagnated as well. So that's a point of concern. Uh, that's it from us today. Thanks for listening. Tune in tomorrow for the latest news of financial markets.